So before we dive into the pure fidelity harmony, we need to have a quick conversation about packaging. I know that is not the most exciting way to kick off our last review here in Arizona before we head to Texas, but hang in there folks. So who cares about packaging? Well, John Stratton does, that's who. And when you open up the Harmony packaging, you are greeted with multiple layers of high density foam that is CNC'd to perfectly fit the table's parts. Being no stranger to high dollar hi-fi products, I can tell you that this should be the norm, and unfortunately, it's not. All too often, we see components that are double the price tag of every single product that Cheap Audio Man will ever review on his channel, and they are wrapped up in some bubble wrap and tossed into some packing peanuts. And yes, while I refuse to do a lame unboxing video ever again, and I won't spend the next 10 minutes boring you with more information on this topic, I'll leave it at this. John Stratton from Pure Fidelity got the high score, folks. We can all go home. He won the game and all the rest of these bozos can call him for advice when it comes to making the customer feel appreciated before they even get to the product that they purchased. Well done, John. You freaking killed it, my friend. Starting with the Harmony's feet, these are ISO Acoustics Gaia's, and I was pleased to see that these are part of the DNA for dealing with nasty vibrations and resonances. Next, the feet are secured to a 3 quarter inch 6061 aircraft aluminum isolation base, which is CNC to perfectly match the profile of the plinth sitting above it. Speaking of the plinth, which is available in four stunning finishes, this is 50 millimeter thick MDF, which when combined with the platter in the feet below, tackles resonances like a champ. The motor drive system is a 12 volt AC synchronous motor that provides quiet, stable, and vibration-free power to the sub platter. While some manufacturers choose glass or aluminum for the platters, Harmony is a firm believer that Delrin is the ultimate choice and the Harmony comes with a massive 48 millimeter platter. No table is complete without a tone arm and cartridge and the Harmony includes a beautiful PF309 arm and as luck would have it, this is the first review that's covering the brand new Stratos low output MC cartridge as well. Keeping everything in time and a must have for speed stability, the Harmony also comes standard with the Maestro Speed Control Box, which is powered by its own linear power supply. Now look, on one hand, reviewing a turntable should be straightforward, but at the same time, it's rather complex because there are so many variables at play. Meaning, if you wanna know how this turntable sounds, you have already asked the wrong question. It's not that simple, and a turntable is part of one equation. Keeping in mind that I'm working with a cartridge I've never spent time with, which is one variable, and again, what this table is connected to is another variable. In my case, I'm using the Harmony with two different phono stages, so let's talk about it. The first, which has been my reference for many years, is the Modrite PH9.0. This all-tube phono stage has all the loading and gain options conveniently in the front, but more important, it sounds jaw-dropping, amazing, we are talking end game here, folks. The background noise is near silent, the dynamic output is impressive, and best of all, it brings a party when it comes to holographic magic. Yes, tubes, my friends. It's all about the tubes. And when combined with analog playback, well, that's a checkmate all the way to the bank. The second stage that we are using is a newcomer to NRD and it is solid state. This is the Holo Audio LCR1 Mark V, which was sent over by Kitsune Hi-Fi. Now this guy has quite a bit more versatility than the PH9.0 with the use of dip switches and gain switches on the bottom for loading options and surely sounds a little different than the 9.0 as well. First, this thing is dead silent. I mean zero, zilch, nada, and when it comes to background noise, it's just pitch black. Also, it's punchy as heck, and I'd argue that it might dish out just a little more bass slam than the Modrite as well. 
As far as staging is concerned, it's analytical and detailed, but doesn't bring quite the same 3D magic as the 9.0. So, how does the turntable sound? Well, which phono are we talking about? What amplification device are we using to light up the turntable? Because guess what? That does make a difference. So it's not that simple. Like I said, asking how the harmony table sounds is like asking how good is chocolate? I mean, it's good, but there are many, many variables involved and it's just not quite that simple. A turntable is nothing without an arm, and the PF309 is manufactured in Germany by Acoustic Signature to pure fidelity specifications. The arm is gorgeous, and it is built like a tank. The main talking points here is you do have control over VTA and azimuth, which is what most need to know. The arm is carbon fiber, and the bearings are manufactured by SKF in Germany. The arm setup was simple, and the only thing that I wish that it offered was VTA on the fly. Other than that, functionally, the PF309 is a gorgeous offering and more important that when combined with the rest of the package, sounds freaking fantastic. I have been around tables that cost as much and in some cases more than the Harmony. The old phrase, you get what you pay for, is sometimes a double-edged sword, and there are some tables that cost more than the Harmony that might look impressive or give you bragging rights to your audiophile buddies, but I'm gonna tell you that some of those turntables do have issues that no one ever seems to talk about. Speaking from personal experience, resonance, vibrations, and all the noises from the table making its way through the rack, bleeding into your floors, and ruining the entire vinyl experience is the biggest problem that must be solved from the get-go. What John has done with the Harmony is completely addressing all of those issues and that, my friends, you must know before we even get into listening observations. I cannot express this enough, but the Gaia Feet combined with the aluminum platform is the building blocks of success. So getting this out of the way, and please listen to me, super important to know, let's chat about what this beast of a turntable sounds like. The first record that I played with the Harmony after installing the arm, which took about two minutes, was Willie and the Poor Boys. This record is straight from my CCR box set from Analog Productions and QRP, and one of my absolute favorites. The record sounded perfect. That was my stomach, I'm hungry, I need to get some tacos. With the 9.0 in the mix, the band was in my room, and the music sounded three-dimensional. With the LCR1 in the mix, the album sounded a little more detailed and focused, and also seemed to bring a little more heft and weight to the party. In both cases, I was pleased with how crisp and clear the top end sounded, and not once did I find myself thinking, I wish that cartridge that John sent to me would do this, or do that. No, instead, I felt like this cart was stuffing nothing but happy sonic treats in my ear canals, and while I'd argue that my tried and true Dyna 20X2L might be a little more neutral, I thought this cart sounded a little more full-bodied, so let's walk through that. It was almost as if the Stratos decided to pack on a couple of pounds, and at the same time, didn't go about it by eating McRib straight for 30 days, if you know what I'm saying. If you don't know what I'm saying, I'll be concise. The Strato seems to offer a little more meat on the bones than my 20X2L, and I noticed this with lower mid-range and Mel vocals. Aside from that, they both do walk the line of being detail-centric, but nothing sounded clinical or sterile. It's possible that the vast majority of the folks listening to these carts side by side I would say they might call the Stratos as being more musical, which is hard to quantify, but if that is where they landed, I would totally understand and even agree. Next, I grabbed the Black Album and dropped the needle on Sad But True. With the LCR1 at the helm, the paint was peeling off my walls, and my goodness. The cymbal hits sounded so ballsy and realistic, it quickly reminded me as to why I even got into vinyl in the first place. Folks, let's get this part right. This turntable, with this cart, breathing life into either of these phonos with that record, cymbal hits, top end extension, it sounds jaw-dropping amazing. It is the opposite experience of bad digital. And look, digital can do this when it's done right, but I gotta say it also has a hard time with getting cymbal hits and decay to sound this dang good. 
With the 9.0, the same was true, but I gotta say, the vocals is where the 9.0 took center stage and made it clear that when it comes to vinyl, tubes are very hard to dethrone. James' voice was suspended in the air, and with each passage, the intensity of his voice had actual emotion tied to it, making it hard to distinguish the difference of him singing in front of me versus a recorded performance. Yes, we're talking that kind of good. Another reason I chose Metallica was to see if I could detect any issues with timing and with the harmony and the maestro working together. Not a chance. I even bounced back and forth between the record and digital just to verify and the harmony was pitch perfect and in time. All good news, and like I said earlier, the table sounds freaking sublime. So the Brene family is headed out to Texas next week, and there is nothing more that I would have liked to spend a lot more time on this review, but I promised John to knock this out quickly. I still have a ton of things to say about the harmony table, and if John ever wants to work with us in the future, the door is wide open. Yes, 8,000 bucks is a lot of money to spend on anything, but the good news is this. When you drop that kind of coin on the Pure Fidelity Harmony, you will be getting one of the finest platforms for vinyl playback that I've ever spent time with. Make no mistake, this table picks fights with some of the best out there, regardless of their price. Combined with the Stratos and PH 9.0 from ModRite, you just inhaled the gateway drug to holographic soundstage, and you have been warned. There is no going back. Combined with the LCR1 from Kitsune, you have perfect clarity, pitch black backgrounds, and the ability to dig just a little deeper in bass extension. Either way you go, the Harmony from Pure Fidelity is an end-game turntable that tackles resonance, is pitch perfect, and gives listeners the opportunity to find out for themselves what vinyl playback is supposed to sound like. And as always, this is Ron from New Record Day signing out, and I will see you guys in Texas in the next video.